Hello everyone, my name is Andrew and welcome back to the Coin Channel. So, I am currently working on this video here and I noticed that the audio quality just doesn't seem to be too good in certain parts because in this video I am in a very windy location. You can actually tell that the waveform on top is a lot bigger than the waveform on the bottom. It's a lot thicker in appearance than the bottom which tells me that there's a lot of wind noise coming from the upper channel. So let's just have a listen and see how that sounds. Oh Mark, but it definitely looks like it's rusting, so it's not a silver ring. Close call number two. So what you would hear in your left ear tends to be quite loud compared to the right one. What I think is best is for me to fix this audio and improve the sound quality. It can be kind of difficult to know how to do that, so I just thought it might be a good idea to make a little video showing how I go about this process. So. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. Alright, so the first step which I've already done is to separate and isolate the region of sound that doesn't quite sound good. So this is the audio track. It includes a stereo sound, so there's a left channel and a right channel. Now the left channel is quite noisy, but the right channel seems to be a whole lot better. So if we take a listen here once again to this region of audio. All mark, but it definitely looks like it's rusting, so it's not a silver ring. Close call number two. So that's how it sounds. First thing I want to do is I want to actually only have one of the two audio channels. That way the noisier one can be removed. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So I feel that the right audio track is a whole lot better than the left one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make it so that the audio is panned 100% to the right. Just drag this bottom slider here and I'm using Sony Vegas Pro. This is version 13 so it's kind of old. Now that we have slid that audio slider all the way to the right, now we should go from stereo to mono and only hear the right audio channel. So let's have a listen to that. All mark, but it definitely looks like it's rusting, so it's not a silver ring. Close call number two. So as you can hear, nothing was coming out of my left channel, only the right one. So we have eliminated some of that noise, and we're going to save this and render it as a FLAC file. So we want to stick with as high of a quality as we can. In this case, I went with 96,000 hertz, 24-bit stereo. The higher the bit rate and the higher the frequency, the better. So we're going to go ahead and render this guy. Just hit the render button and let it do its thing. So here we are. We have processed this Mother's Day.flac file. So that's pretty good. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and open the folder. And we have our Mother's Day.flac file right here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to open up a audio editing program and the one I like to use is Audacity, which is a free program and it works pretty well. So I do have version 2 of Audacity, they do have a version 3 now. Either one is okay, I prefer version 2 because that is what I have been using for quite some time. So opening up Audacity here, just going to let this guy load up a little bit. It's a very lightweight program. You can see it's 2.2.1. This is going to be all we need here. So now what we want to do is we want to take two copies of the Mother's Day.flac file. Just drag and drop right into the program. So as you can see, it is importing the FLAC file. And this will only take a couple of seconds. And there we are. So you can actually see we have one of these tracks. So now let's add in the other one. All right, as you can see, we have two identical copies of the audio file. So left one, right one, left two, right two. So now you can see that we had a 100% right. So that means only the right audio track has data that is present. So if we go back to our Mother's Day file, you can see only the right audio tracks are populated with data because we know the right audio is the clearest. So basically, we'll just take our good right audio Flip it to the left audio and combine these two. So let's just see how we do that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of go in the region where our left audio faded out. 
And if we click there, now this region is selected. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in and kind of increase our accuracy here. And you can see there is a small region of no data here. It's very hard to see. But if we zoom in, we'll see it more clearly. It's around this region. So let's have a look. So yeah, you can see we have this line, very short line of no audio in either track. So we're going to click in that region here. Now that we have that selected, we can zoom out all the way till we view the entire waveform, like so. And you can see this is the region where our stereo track became a mono track. We're going to select that region to the left of the mono track. Then we want to go up here to the silence audio selection and choose that. And so as you can see, the left part before we go from server to mono is now empty. And we want to repeat on the right as well. So here we have the right region selected, which is going to signify the end of the mono track. And you can see we were almost there, but we're just going to correct ourselves here. Then we can zoom out and drag across there. Now we want to do the same thing. We want to silence the audio selection. So now we have isolated only the region of the right audio in this upper track here. The next item was a surface find. The surface find just happens to be some kind of loop or hook of some kind. So yeah, as you can tell, only right audio is playing, no left audio. But if we go ahead and go to swap stereo channels, click that. Now what was once the right audio is now the left audio. So if we have a listen here, we will see the difference. The next item was a surface find. The surface find just happens to be some kind of loop or hook of some kind. So this tells us that what we have done is essentially swapped the right audio and the left audio. And since we muted everything else, we won't hear the swapped audio channels of anything else. So if we go ahead and unmute and have a listen, you can hear what was originally once mono is now stereo. The next item was a surface find. The surface find just happens to be... So yeah, as you can tell, it is louder because we have basically doubled the right audio track. So now it is being played twice as loud. So you might want to lower the volume to about half of the original just so you can keep the audio consistent. We will go ahead and export it as an MP3. It's a very famous format and everyone knows it. So we're going to go ahead and export as an MP3. So we click that, give it a couple moments here. And as you can see, we have a save as type as an MP3. We can choose quality and everything, but I don't really care about that. So now we have an MP3 file. So as you can see, I saved it to my external hard drive. So just keep in mind where it's saved. So when we hit save here, you can see it says a warning. We have four stereo channels, one left, one right, and two left, two right. So one, two, three, four stereo channels here. And all they're saying is we're combining these four into two. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And it gives you options to add information like track information if you choose, but we don't care. Hit OK. And now since we ended up getting 96,000, because that was actually our FLAC audio quality, we could see it's 96,000 hertz. So what they're letting us know here is that is at 96,000 and they don't allow that in mp3 file format so they're going to reduce this 96,000 into 48,000 so that's okay so we're going to go ahead and okay here it is now exporting the entire file with our settings here so what will happen is this will be added into here so we will have our missing audio now restored Alrighty, so now that we have done this, we now should have a clean audio file. If we take a look here, we find our Mother's Day MP3 file. We take a look at that. We know that around the 10 minute mark is where we made our correction, so we should be able to hear a particularly loud portion of the video because that's basically where we applied the right track twice. So it should be twice as loud. So around 11 minutes, 19 seconds. We have a listen. No hallmark, but 
It definitely looks like it's rusting, so it's not a silver ring. Close call number two. So you can tell there was a little bit of wind, but it was much, much better than before. All right, when you have a new project open, all you got to do is just open up your newly created audio file, add this into your project. Since we made that correction and we used Audacity, which is what I used to generate the new file, this is going to be our new audio for the project. So we're going to go ahead and take our old project here. And if we go ahead and add this in, as you can see, the peaks are pretty much identical here. We now have two exact copies of the same waveform. So what we want to do is since this top row is our MP3 file that we made, we're going to take the original video file and mute it. You can go ahead and just hit the mute button. And the only audio you will hear is from our just created MP3 file. So all we got to do now is get to the region where we added the audio. So we're going to zoom in here. As you can see, it started here. So we basically just hit the split button. Now I want to go to the other side. This is the end of the mono to stereo conversion region. Split that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drag this gain knob all the way to about halfway. So now it is 50% as loud. And if we have a listen before and after, we should hear a much more even audio. Beautiful. Oh, it got scared of me. <laughs> the next item was a surface find. The surface find just happens to be some kind of loop. As you can tell, it sounds much better now. So let's go ahead and listen to the region that had a loud spike in audio from the wind. Let's have a listen here. No hallmark, but it definitely looks like it's rusting, so it's not a silver ring. Close call number two. You might have been able to hear just a little bit of warbliness, but it's much better than before, and you can actually hear less wind. My voice is more clear, and it just overall sounds a whole lot better. So now let's take a look at the end here. Oh, that is it. So now, let's go ahead and move on to see the next target. All right, let's see what we got. So yeah, you can definitely tell that this method is a very good way to reduce how much noise and interference you have in your videos. So I hope that this little technique that I showed you is helpful. And if it is, well, I'm glad because it sure as heck helped me out. I'm gonna keep this video uploaded on YouTube pretty much for me to just refer to in the future, but also, in case you guys have an interest and want to know, well, here it is just for you. So thank you so much for watching. Take care out there, be safe, and have an awesome day.